stuff. Oh, man, I'll tell you what. Uh, Sergeant Slaughter was just on, and <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know. You know, I, I've been saying I'm like a kid in a candy store with every guest, and, and to have Road Warrior Animal on fans and uh, the 30 or 40,000 people listening tonight, we've had a wonderful show, and it's only going to get better in the next uh, next half hour, and uh, I'm so glad you're on with us. Well, thanks a lot for having me, man. I tell you, Honky, all the took was, you know, you don't have to ask me twice, man. You know, I do your show anytime, and I've heard, I've heard, I've heard through the grapevine that the show's been doing well, and I'm happy for all your success, man. Yeah, and uh, I, you know, I, you, I like to start, I like to start at the at the front end and try to work our way back, usually with everyone, so that uh, I'll, I'll give you all, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'll set you all up for this because it's, uh, it's the way I want to say it. You know, you have a, a fabulous book out there right now that uh, that's doing wonderful. Uh, Hall of Fame inductee this year, which was fantastic. And I've always said it, the greatest tag team that ever was put in the wrestling business, the Road Warriors, and, and bar none, I don't care what they called you or how they changed your name or repackaged you, you guys were the Road Warriors, and, and, and I've always said the greatest tag team that was ever, ever out there. Oh, man, I, I appreciate that. I know if Hawk were here right now, he'd appreciate it too, you know. Uh, we were we were lucky we got Paul Ellering thrown in the mix with us right in the beginning, and Paul was, was a lifesaver for Hawk and I. You know, we were just two dumb bouncers off the street, and he guided us the right way, and, you know, we, we got to achieve what we got to achieve. And, you know, through the great career, you know, I, was, I had the opportunity to write that book, you know, The Road Warriors, Danger, Death, and the Rush of Wrestling. And uh, we just made the bestseller list. We're uh, on Amazon.com, the number one rated wrestling book. And, you know, you know so it, it, things could be going well. And then you got the Hall of Fame, man, the, the creme of the creme. You know, you got the WWE pulled out the red carpet, as you know, hockey. It's an honor, a heck of an honor. And, you know, they do it first class. And uh, it, it's just been a whirlwind of a year, you know. Yeah, you've had, uh, gosh, the last 12 months uh, with the book and and everything and then the Hall of Fame coming. Uh, it's it's really been a, a big, a big big deal for you. And, of course, you know, I want to uh, mention your son uh, quickly. Uh, that's a great football player, was Ohio State, had the Nagurski Award, uh, and fantastic athlete. And for all the fans out there, I remember you telling me when he was just a young boy that you were the coach and you helped. Hey, he owes it to you. You trained him, man. <laughs> yeah, me me making all these deals with uh, with Mr. McMahon and Jim Crockett and all these other guys that, hey, I'll come work for you, but i got to go home and coach games on Saturday mornings, you know, and, and flying back <laughs> out Saturday night to go, go to the event. It, it, it drove me nuts, but you know what? I didn't want to be one of those dads that was the – you know, you are involved in, in, in your, your kid's life. You know, do as I say and not as I do. You know what I mean? I want to be the guy, right. you know. So, and so well, yeah, I, he, you I, know, I, I was there. I know, I know the words you're looking for. We call them Disneyland dads, the ones that come home once a month and just shower the kids with anything they want as opposed to being there to help train them like you did, uh, young James. Yeah, I, I didn't want yeah. to be the Disneyland dad. Uh, I, I would have rather been the... I would have much rather been the haunted house dad and been there, let him know I'm over his shoulder. You know, you know what I mean, <laughs> in, a, in a good way. You know, but well, you know, he, he 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 was a good kid, man. He he took to everything I ever said, and you know, all my kids were were great athletes. My daughter was one of the best hockey players in the state of Minnesota, and you know, you know, so it's a, you know, they all listen well, and they're all they're all good kids. They never were troublemakers, and like I, I got lucky. Thank God they didn't get none of my qualities because uh, they would have been a mess. Well, you know, so, you know yeah. that's that's what I say around this house. But uh, please, you know, uh, you see what I've done to myself. Don't do it to yourself. And but uh, tell us about the book now and how how the people can get it. And are you still on the book tour? Yeah, I am. I I, I just got done. I I just was at the infamous bookends in uh, Ridgewood, New Jersey. Uh, all any uh, sports autobiography that's right, written a good book, I guess, has been the bookend. It's a it's a great location. It, and I also was at the place called the Book Review Friday night in uh, on Long Island. <clears throat> so I took care of just my first stop in in New York City. I plan to go back here probably again in the fall. But uh, you know, I've been to the Mall of America. I've been to Chicago. I've been all, all over the place with it, and, and it's actually going great. You know, once the 
things settle down with the CBA agreement, I'll be hitting the state of Missouri there because of the St. Louis Rams, and I'll be hitting Ohio too because of my son James. Like you said, he's playing. You know, he's a three-time All-American there, so we'll go hit that market. It's a warm market for us, and 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 you know, you know, people in Ohio are great wrestling fans anyway. You know. Yes, so, they are. But yeah, it, you know, it, it's a good book. You know, I, I took about eight years off on writing a book after after Hawk had passed away, just just because you know, you know, some of the books that came out were great, and some of the books that came out were like kiss and tell books. You know, some of the guys tell on each other, and which I didn't want to get into that kind of book. You know what I mean? I wanted it to be a celebration of a wrestling career, and and you know, and and I just confirmed what a lot of people's suspicions were about, you know. Hey, Fabe, and a lot of those other things, that, and I try to explain it in a different way where it wasn't like giving up our business right up to these people, you know. So um, <clears throat> yeah, I've gotten great reviews on it, and not one review has come back bad. So I'm really proud. I, I wrote it with a guy. My ghostwriter was Andrew William Wright out of uh, Newark, New Jersey. He's a great guy. Uh, he's in the middle of doing Booker T's book right now. So, I mean, it's uh, it's been real well, and I love the book tour. You know, Hockey, like you, I really respect my wrestling fans, so I get to go around the country and see fans that I've not seen for a long time, you know, because I've not been in the ring for a while. So it, it, it's a good – it's kind of like a nice rebirth, you know. Uh, my Legends figures are doing great with WWE, and the folks doing great in, the, in this Hall of Fame. And then there's the uh, Pro Wrestling Hall of Fame up in Amsterdam, New York, here this next Saturday that we're getting inducted into. So we got another one coming yet, so. That's, that's, really, that's really great, you know. And it's like you said about the, the WWE Hall of Fame thing. Uh, they do roll out the red carpet for you, and, and it's it, it is a big honor to 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 be there and do that. And of course, the Upstate New York uh, Pro Wrestling Hall of Fame is is truly an honor. Yeah, it, it is. And you know that that's sent out to sixty of your peers that you've been in the wrestling ring business with, and only thirty of them will vote, and they vote back in on it. So you're voted in by the guys who have paved the way before you and have been in the ring with you. And it's just a respectful thing, and that that's a real, real prestigious honor, you know. Yes, it is, and uh, I, I can't think of anyone uh, who deserves it more than the Road Warriors and, and, and Paul Ellering. And I, I only ran across Paul like one time since he uh, left uh, the business and started doing all the itinerod stuff that, or whatever they call it up and, and yep. out there, yep. but... Uh, uh, you guys were so fabulous, and I can remember watching you guys uh, on, on on the Superstation, WTBS, 5.06 every Saturday afternoon on cable. And I looked and I saw I saw you guys, and I said, These, this is really something. And you guys set the standards for every other, I say a power tag team because you were powerful guys who did power moves, and it was such a contrast in styles, and that's what makes a good tag team. Hawk was the razzmatazz guy, and you were the big, strong, go in there and beat the crap out of somebody. Yeah, you know, one thing we try to do, man, and it, and it's a tribute to the guys we got to work in the ring with, because you know you're only as good as the opponent you're in the ring with, you know. Uh, it, it, uh, it's such the, I try to explain to this to people out there, the fans, this wrestling business is such a brotherhood that, uh, you know, <clears throat> one thing I'm proud of is that we never, I mean, because we were thrown in right in the mix right away, is that we never hurt anybody. And I, and that thing, I think that's one thing that Mystique that was ahead of us that people thought, oh, no, no one wants to wrestle the Road Warriors. They're going to hurt you. They're, they don't want to be businessmen. And if, if we, I, when I was looking back writing this book, <clears throat> Hockey, if, if you would have seen all the jobs we've done in the first year and a half of this business, I said, what in the world are these people talking about? <laughs> you know, because, you know, it, it's a little ins and outs that, the, that some of the, the boys or the fans don't know. But, you know, hey, back then, half the guys were afraid to get in the ring with us. You know, so I, I think we, wasn't, we, we did our job all right back then, but, you know, it was all, you know, we always respected the business and, and the guys and what it took to get to where any any level in the business, you know. Anytime you can have the locker room afraid to get in the ring with you, you're obviously doing a pretty good job. I was afraid to get in the ring with Lou Thess, but he was one of the greatest workers in the world. But I was scared to death of the man until I went in the ring with him. You know, I, I thought the same thing when uh, when we first got in the ring in Japan with Billy Robinson and even even Les Thornton. He's not that big, but he just is such a shooter. 
you know, but that's the way this business is, man. You know, it, just like a recent situation I was in, you know, people sometimes they read you the wrong way, and sometimes you like, I just got misquoted in an article. I mean, out of all the things that have happened great in my life here, with, and the things that are going on with the WWE rolling out the red carpet, you know, some some goofball misquoted me as. I mean, it, it, it doesn't even make sense as, as as bashing the wellness program of the of the company, right? And I'm thinking, well, all that I know is that anybody gets hurt now or needs a neck operation and gets injured, the WWE is the first one to step up to take care of it. You know, so yeah. <clears throat> I just want to make it clear out there, if anybody's read that article from Power Slam Magazine, I did not bash the WWE. I did not hammer the WWE. I did not hammer the wellness policy. I do not have a comment on it. I think it's great that the guys have insurances now and are protected in the ring. Because back in Hockey and Year and I Day, we were protected. If we didn't have our own insurance and our own stuff, we kind of were hosed in a way. So there was no taking any time off when we got hurt. We we just kept going, and we, and we kind of played hurt. You know what I mean? Uh, yes, and, uh, you know, that's a, a whole other program about misquote because I have been – I've probably been misquoted. Yeah. Yeah, you've had one or two in your time. I know that. I, I have been misquoted more than anyone in this business. There's, there's more scuttlebutt and things. Listen, if you want the truth, ask me. I'll be more than happy to tell you. But if you don't want, it, <laughs> don't you know? Don't go around behind my back and say something. And I and I know you. And I, I for the fans that don't know, we we as I've talked with Sergeant Slaughter earlier, we all missed each other, and I missed you guys for about 20 years of my career because we never crossed paths. Yeah, yeah. Everybody was just in a different territory at one time. And, and, and then when we did cross paths, uh, uh, the Road Warriors and Honky Tonk Man, we were, like you said, a real brotherhood. And, and you mentioned uh, uh, Hawk earlier. And uh, Not only was it it's a professional sadness for me, but a personal sadness of, of his passing because he had called me about two weeks before and wanted me to help him with the eBay stuff and, and get his website going. He he was so happy and, and, and so excited about, man, this thing you're doing with this website is great, and I want you to help me. And, and and I was more than willing to do it, and then all of a sudden the bad news came, and, and, and gosh. I, I, remember just, him telling me about, I remember him telling me about that, man. You know, yeah, for the people that didn't know Hawk, you know, Hawk was bigger than life. I mean, Hawk was – Hog was the guy that had the heart of the state of Texas, and if he didn't have the money to borrow you, if you needed money, he'd borrow from me and say, Adam, I'll pay you back because this guy needs money. I mean, that's just the kind of guy Hawk was. You know, yeah, okay, he had one or two things that were negative, but I mean, hell, who does it in this wrestling business? Everybody does, you know. But uh, Hawk, yeah, man, he's been greatly missed, you know. He, he's a kid around. We were talking about kids and family and the, and the uh, being that kind of dad. Hawk said, Hey, look at this face. I'll never do this to a kid. You know, and, you know, that was his humor. He he was my kid's uncle, you know, and and my he loved my kids, and, and you know, he just loved kids in general. And uh, that that was his uh, that was his love. He wanted to be a part of that, you know. Yeah, man, he it, it's definitely not the same. It's been almost nine years, man. It's, it's just like yesterday. I, I know. I was watching. I, I was, in fact, I just, you were mentioning where you were on the weekend up in New Jersey and, and uh, New York. I was on Staten Island on Saturday, and uh, I was in Brooklyn on Friday night, and and then I was in New Jersey on Saturday night uh, also. But I saw when I was doing autograph signing at one of these sports places, they had the they had your guys' introduction to your Hall of Fame uh, 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 being inducted, and showing these old clips, and then showing new clips and everything. And I sat there and I looked, and I I. You guys were so ahead of your time, so ahead of everyone else that it's un- and, and you know when you're like that, you live forever. You never die. Yeah, you know it, it's uh, it's it's amazing. <clears throat> you know it because you had one of the the best gimmicks in this business as well. It's like the people, the people know who they like and they know who they boo and they know who they want to they want to cheer for and they know who they want to buy when it comes to action figures and all this stuff. You know what I mean? And and uh, I gotta admit, man, we we have the last two three years have sold so much. I mean, we sold more action figures when we when Hawk had passed than we did when we were working full time. Became part of that Legends program and it's just been crazy. And you know how popular the gimmicks are in the UK and overseas and Germany and Brussels and a bunch of other places, you know? 
It just, uh, it's like you're right. It's like a never ending cycle, which is kind of nice for everybody. You know what I mean? And, and then, you know, by, by the hall of fame thing and, and everything, and, and those people seeing those clips on you guys, uh, and we have listeners from all over the world right now, and we'll have 10,000 downloads tomorrow, uh, from people who can't listen to the show live tonight. And they're, they really are the fans around the world that buy the action figures and, and, and all of those things. And I didn't really get to listen to your speech because I was signing the autographs, but I know that what you were saying came from your heart, and that's the only way to give a speech. I noticed you didn't have any notes because, uh, <laughs> you know, when I inducted Coco back in uh, Houston, they said, do you need a script to read? I said, gosh, no, I've known the guy for 34 years. We trained together. I said, I don't yeah. need somebody yeah. to tell me what to say, and, and you didn't either. No, you, it was kind of cool. You know, you know Ellering is so uh, <clears throat> eloquent in his speech that I just, uh, you know, he said he, he's so off the wall in his verbiage that I just kind of was looking at him and reacting off of him, and I just knew when he's done, it was my time, and I just filled in. You know, <clears throat> they tried to give me the guy to write the speech, and I bless his heart, he wanted to do something really well for us, and he was great to work with, but, but we... I just couldn't do it. I said, listen, uh, you know, and, and I really wanted to paint my face that night, too, but I'm, now I'm glad I didn't because, you know, I figured that's the way I came into this dance and that's the way I wanted to leave this dance. You know what I mean? And, uh, but once, once Ellering brought out that hawk figure and put it on the podium, you know, we all almost lost it there up on stage, you know, so I just said, yeah. oh, Lord. I, I said, where did you get that thing from? And, you know, and, it, and uh, he said it on there, and then they got a close-up on there, and then the crowd gave him a standing ovation again, and it was just... It was just nuts, man. It, it's just it, there's nothing like that WWE universe, man. That WWE fan base, it's just crazy. It it really is, and uh, uh, it, those moments are so there's such moving moments for someone. And and you mentioned the face paint, and that that brings me to uh, you you I I don't know how you were able to do it, but night after night, and every time I've seen photos or seen you in person putting that scorpion uh or the giant spider it never changes you never deviate from it and it's are you an artist or a painter in any way you know my, my brother mark who used to wrestle as one of the wrecking crew one of terminator uh he, he he's the artist in the family he can draw you know leonard skinner album covers and all this other stuff he's he's phenomenal I cannot draw you a stick man on a piece of paper. Oh, God. Now, why would you say that when that is, that is, that is the most unique drawing that, that anyone could ever do, and you have to do it by reverse because you're looking in the mirror? I know. But for some reason, I get in the face paint, and I get on there, and I'm drawing backwards on there, and I get the lines all right, and it all matches, and I don't know how I get it to match up. That's why Hawk always did the Joker look. He goes, I can't screw this one up. This is why I'm going to do this. this. is my Joker look. It sticks out the tongue. I can't screw this. You know, I can only draw this one, and I'm not doing any other ones. You know, so, okay. And I always did the spider and tried to do the horns or the, the, you know, whatever, you know. So, it, anyway. It, what, yeah. Well, that's, the, you know, that those are the things that set someone apart from someone else. And that's what makes you uniquely different. And 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 then when it comes for, for from the crowd reaction – or, or the crowd gravitating towards you, then that's what does it. Yeah, I mean, well, that's that's the whole name of the game, right? You get to you get that crowd to, yeah. And the, you know how finicky the crowd is; they're only going to yay and boo who they want to yay and boo. I mean, the wrestling fans are some of the smartest fans around. They're not; you can't trick them. You know, no, they're, they're really... for... <laughs> yeah. Uh... But I, I, I yep. always look back when when I see you guys, and I saw you, I saw that contrast, and and every partner, you know, I, for twelve years that, that I started in the business, I started as a single wrestler, and six months later I was in tag tag teams for like ten or twelve years, and every partner I had, where there was a contrast, and and I had it with when I was with Larry Latham, who was Spot Moon Dog. He was the brawler. I was the razzmatazz guy. With Greg Valentine, when he dyed his hair black, he was the brawler. I was the razzmatazz guy. You were the brawler, and Hawk was the razzmatazz guy and, and, and did all the, 
you know, the silly body movements and things like that. And that's what set you apart. You know, half the time we would do promos, you know, I was the hard sell guy. I would remind people what whatever what the what, what the four horsemen did to us. I would remind everybody and why we're going to get him back. Then I'd tell Hawk something, and Hawk would come. Well, Adam, I was so bad. We were giving our mom kitty punches before we were even born. And I'm looking at him, and I have to walk off the set and shake my head because I'm cracking up. I don't know where this is coming from. <laughs> he would come out, you, you know. He, 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 Hawk would do whatever he had to do to get right. He'd get right, and he'd come in and do those promos. And the next thing you know, he just rattled them all off. And, and then Ellering standing by me with the smirk, hitting that Wall Street Journal in his hand, and and he would just chime in on something too. You know, it's just hey man, I tell you, yeah. You know, and you know what? We never, ever once went over. What are you going to say, bro? You know what you're going to say? No. What are you going to say? No. We never said anything. You, I, I did the same thing. I, I never looked. When Jimmy and Hart and I were together, uh, we'd step up there and Mean Gene would say, well, okay, uh, Saturday night we're in so-and-so and you have so I didn't. I just went and Jimmy didn't know what I was going to say and I didn't know what he was going to We just did it. You know, you know, uh, Hoggy, you know, with, uh, you know, with uh, Mike Graham, you know, Mike Graham, great guy. You know, yeah. Second yeah. generation guy in this business, you know, and I respect Mike. Mike said, he goes, you know what that's called? Guys that don't have to rehearse anything and just get pops like that and do whatever, that's the it factor. He goes, I call that the it factor. And I said, why do you call it the it factor? He goes, because they can look in the ring. They don't have to say anything. The crowd reacts. That's part of it. They can get on the mic, talk about their opponents. That's part of it. You know how to get them to yay, boo, kind of like a ventriloquist, you know, or a puppeteer, and that's part of the it. He goes, yeah. He goes, Guys like you guys have the itch factor, and I said, "Well, that's nice of you to say, Mike." You know, I said, "We're just trying." You know, at the time, we're just trying to make, get our high spots right. You know, <laughs> you know? And, not, and, and not trip over the top rope with those spikes on our shoulders. You know. Well, and see there again, you you know, you guys had the uniforms, fabulous, absolutely. Whoever I don't know which one of you guys came up with the idea of having these spikes and 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 the shoulder pads and and. But now, and the fans don't realize that those things that you guys had the, the the these steel spikes on those shoulder pads. I don't know what it twenty thirty pounds you carried around every day through the airports, every day to every oh, building. Yeah. We barely we barely made the weight limit on the airplanes. <laughs> yeah, that's why we always had two or three bags. You know, I actually. Hawk came up with the ideas of the haircuts. He we're sitting there with Ole Anderson one time, and Hawk came up and says, "Hey." What if animal has a mohawk and I'll have a reverse mohawk so it looks like we bend over, we can plug our heads into each other, bam, right? That's where the haircuts came from. Now, the shoulder pads, I remember I had a friend of mine that was playing for the Miami Dolphins, and his equipment manager, Bobby Monica, his brother Ted, was the head of Rydell Power Protective Equipment. And I said, wow, what if we did shoulder pads? I told him, Mike, we had like a couple months off, and I said, hey, I'm going to devise us some new wear stuff to wear, shoulder pads with, with spikes on them and stuff. What do you think? It was cool. And I sat in my garage with my drill, my drill bit, and I'm drilling holes, and I'm putting different size spikes all over everywhere. I had a friend of mine that worked at a, at a tooling crib making for us. Next thing you know, we got the black shoulder pads, <clears throat> and they just worked. We had the chrome chains hanging from them with the pads and, you know, sprayed the tips of them red and let them drip down like it was blood, and it all worked. I know, and when you look back at other tag teams like the maybe the interns or the medics who walked out with a mask on and and white tights and white trunks and went to the ring, and here come you guys, haircuts, face paint, spikes sticking out, and, and you know, what a rock. I mean, how can you follow that? <laughs> I, 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 I know, right? We I, I, Exactly. You know, when you guys, guys like... Uh, there's a uh, Mero and Jim Hurd made Ding and Dong and uh, and trying to make all these other kind of teams and, and you know a real downtime on our business. You know we just, I mean, you you should have seen Ricky Morton's face the very first time we worked with Ricky Morton and Robert Gibson. <laughs> now you, there there couldn't have been a more clean cut white meat baby face team in the history of the business than those two guys at the time, right? Yeah, right, right. yeah. From, from, from any girl ten years old up, they loved them. You know and. and uh, and, and you know, and here we are, New Orleans Superdome wrestling for Jim Crackett Senior Memorial Cup. 
And we've not even got a chance to talk to Ricky and Robert because of that building in New Orleans. There's no way to get across the way it was set up, right? So we're sitting there, and um, and uh, I can just see Ricky over there shaking. He goes, he goes, I'll start. So I tell I tell Hawk, and uh, it was Hawk and I, and I said, Hawk, I'll start with this little punk, and you know, and I'm 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 totally just ribbing Ricky. Now he don't even know it. And I lock up with Ricky. Oh yeah, I lock up Ricky, and I give him a gut shot, and I throw him in. And I said. Duck that elbow, duck the clothesline, give me the hip toss, two drop kicks, a Hawkman in fever drop kick. He goes, what? I said, just do it. Bam, bam, he gives me two drop kicks, Hawkman in fever drop kick, and he looks at me, he goes, you son of a bitch, you can work. You are a worker, you work. He was so mad at me because I never told him, you know, you know, we never took very many arm drags. Not that we couldn't do them, it's just that at certain times the guys we're working with, it just didn't take for us to do that move, you know. And uh, Absolutely. But Rick, Ricky came in there. We turned into like two stone cold, uh, just, just normal heel guys, and uh, and those guys were bumping us around. And the crowd was going nuts, and we were just laughing on the outside of the ring. Halloween came over and gave us a hug. And he goes, he goes, what are you doing? I said, I'm just messing around with Ricky right now. You know, so it was cool. <laughs> Ricky would get very nervous if he didn't know somebody. I I, I know him, <laughs> but yeah, oh, that's, yeah. that's cool. He, you know, he Ricky's kind of guy. If, he, if he's nervous, he said, "Hey, are you mad at me today? Let me know. I'll just hit myself." You know, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but God, so that way when you do the clothes, that doesn't hurt. Oh, man. See, and and the fans, a, 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 a lot of fans never knew that you guys came out of Minnesota, as I mentioned with Sergeant Slaughter, and he mentioned the guys that he came through with, and for some reason, Minnesota turned out. I can't even list them all. There's so many of the guys who came through the school with with you and Hawk. I, I know there's a, a list of the characters. Well, uh, you have uh, you had Hawk and myself. You had uh, Smash Demolition Barry Darso. You had uh, Ravishing Rick Rude. You had uh, Scott Norton, who was the World Arm Wrestling Champ with the NWO with uh, with Hulk right. uh, Then you had Nikita Kolov. Had a broken leg, but he actually watched every one of our, our our camps. So all those guys came out of the same one camp. You know, we took, we had a three month camp, and we all came out of the same one. So and and every one of us did pretty decent in one way or another in the wrestling business. You know, so it was it was pretty cool. Now the Sarge's camp, you had uh, Greg Gagne and Ellering and Kenny Patera, and that's just a, and the Iron Sheik. That's just a few guys. Right. There you know, there had you know, I mean. So. If, if you and I sat down, I think we would probably miss some, but there had to be at least 30, 40 guys that came out of Minnesota. That And, and like you said, your group of guys, each and every one of them, has achieved uh, some good level of success or a great level. Well, you know, you know who gets overlooked all the time and not mentioned with, the, with either group is Bob Backlund. Yeah, you know, that's Bob Apple true. Was, was a great world champ, man. You know, and he gets overlooked all the time, which is surprising. You know, so yeah, there, there was quite a few, man. At one time, it, you know, it was like Texas or Minnesota for a while. Guys coming out, you know. I Actually, know three, they, three places: te- Tennessee, Texas, and Minnesota. Well, you know, we always get com- us guys from Tennessee get brought up, but there was not the, compared to the Minnesota people. We we're a very small. We're a very minority group of guys. There was not very many of us. Well, you should have seen us though. I mean, we used to goof around. You know, of course, we all worked out of Ventura's gym because we were all young, and and he had the the only gym there, so we trained because Jesse the body of Ventura, right? But when you know when we kidded around about wrestling, we would actually only be kidding about wrestling until we were all bouncing to that same bar, Grandma B's, and Sharky was the bartender. And Sharky says, well, I'm going to do a wrestling camp. And we didn't even know if it was a real wrestling camp. We just thought he was going to just teach guys a bunch of wrestling moves. You know? So we went in and we said, oh, well, all right, we'll try it, man. We all got nothing to lose. You know, we were all just bouncing at night. We had all the days over you know, during the camp times. And so we started taking camp. And uh, we thought it was peculiar because, I mean, Ed Sharky never once got in the ring with us. But, uh, you know, he always had some kind of, you know, oh, I got a hernia or I got something, you know, you know whatever was wrong with him. But um, well, I think now, it, it, now, it, now it I, now I know why. Ed was a referee. He he, he wasn't going to get in the ring. For the, uh, oh, for the, I, I, yeah. I set this up we, for the fans. Eddie Sharkey was a referee. Up real quick. Yeah. 
<laughs> I got it. But, yeah, it, it was fun nonetheless, man. We got to, we got to do matches in front of uh, some of the inner city kids in Minneapolis, and I'll tell you what, some of the most honest, hardcore fans, they didn't care if you laid their eyes. They're going to tell you if, you if you sucked or you did something good, you know? And, yeah. Uh, they were good. And, and, you know, but we, we just, I mean, we, I remember sometime, I remember Rude one time, remember, hit me in the lip, you know, and Rude used to be an arm wrestling champ and, you know, and, you know, Magnum TA, we used to call him kind of, you know, PI, Magnum PI, because he looked like the guy, you know. And, and, right, uh, he had the mustache was, and the hair. Oh, yeah. Well, we we literally beat the crap out of me. Barry Darcel smacked him and hit him with a tackle so hard one time, it dislocated my tibia and my lower leg, you know, and it just, just some of the things we went through, and, you know, we, we would walk around limping and feel it pop back in and say, oh, I'm okay now. Let's just go back. We'll catch on to it here in about 10 minutes. You know, and I, that's just the I way just, we were, though. I just cannot imagine myself, you know, some young college kid that I was, walking into that training center and seeing that cast of characters you just explained. I, I, I think I probably oh, would have gone. I would have got in my car and left. <laughs> you ought to hear one better. At the time, Hawk didn't have a car, neither did Rude. I, and Barry's car was broken up, so I was the only one that had it. And I had a two-door Honda Civic. And I would have to I would have to pick Barry, Hawk, and Rude up for wrestling camp. Well, at the time, I was about 290. Barry was about 320. You know, Hawk was probably about 260, and Rude was about 235. Well, the weight limit on the thing was only 700 pounds. In fact, between Barry and I, we almost exceeded the weight limit of the car, you know. It, we, we drove that thing to camp for about two months, and we blew. finally I, I blew a rod through the hood. It was just so much stress on that engine. <laughs> but that's, that's, uh, I, I, I don't even want to see that going down the highway. Bro, it was like that sumo commercial. It was like that sumo commercial with about ten sumos come out of that Honda. That's what it was like. <laughs> And uh, really quick, I want you to, because we're, we're going to run a little overtime tonight. To Steve put us on some extra overtime. You have a radio show you're doing, and it's on when and where? Yeah, it's on it's on K Fan here in Minnesota. It's on Clear Channel, and it's uh, it, which is a K K Fan boss Clear Channel, and uh, it's called Extreme Pro Wrestling Radio. Uh, we we go live on day of pay per views. We're we're live on K Fan. It's 11:30 a.m. in Minneapolis. And uh, we also got the podcast at, uh, you know, I think there's, I think the Facebook is uh, Extreme Pro Wrestling Radio at Facebook.com or something like that. And, but, yeah, we, we got we got the podcast that's up and running, and it's a, it's a great show. Um, I'm on there with a guy, Big D, and, a, and another guy that's on there, and uh, we, do, we do a great job. And his name is uh, Crisco. And uh, there are two Morning Drive guys that do the main show, KDWP in the morning, the, the big FM station. So, it's doing great. <clears throat> you know, love to have you on as a guest, Hawk. I mean, it'd be great to have you on there. I've had Gagne on and X-Pac and a couple other guys on. You know, I like to have guys that got a great character and easy to talk. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'd be more than happy to do it. And uh, and for all the fans out there, again, uh, how can they get your book? And when is the next time? And where can they start seeing you? Well, they uh, they can get me at uh, Extreme Pro Wrestling Radio. Uh, they'll they'll announce it at that webpage, or they can go to w not w w but the roadwarrioranimal dot com. If you go to the roadwarrioranimal dot com, there's a full list of my appearances. You can even purchase a book on there, or you can go to medallionpress dot com and you can get it on ebook or you know Kindle, whatever you like, or you can buy the book itself there. They, they'll have a listing of where I'm at too. But the roadwarrioranimal dot com is the best one, and uh, it, it's a it, it's a place to find out where I'm at. I'm, now I got the Hall of Fame this next weekend, and then uh, I know I got some guest hosting and some shows with WWE coming up, and then I have some. Uh, I think in June I'm back at Harmar Mall where uh, Julie Andrews was just there this last weekend. It's in uh, Roseville, Minnesota. I'm back out there for my second trip around, but I'm going to be coming out there. I'm going to get ready to do a, a tour in Texas and in Florida and uh, and uh, back out in New York and probably Ohio and Missouri for sure because. Uh, those are pretty much hot spots, you know. Where my, like you said before, my son James has played at, and, and is playing Pro Bowl now with the Rams. So it'd just be a natural place for me to go in because uh, I know everybody there in those cities. So, but I appreciate the time, Hawk. It's been a great talking I, to you. I, I, yeah, I, man. I want to. If you get to Phoenix and you're doing a book thing over here at Borders Bookstores down the street from me, I would hope yeah, hey, that both, you. Both Borders and Barnes and Noble. Barnes and Noble holds them all for sure. Barnes and Noble. 
Yeah, and Borders yeah. just got the rights now. That they, you know, because they've had a hard time business wise, they're paying for everything in cash. But they're buying books too, man. So yeah, both the big ones, you know, Borders and Barnes and Noble, carry the book. So I mean, it's it's, it's a great time, and it's an easy read, man. It's a, and uh, you know, kids of all ages, and any, if you're a wrestling fan or not, it's 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 an easy book for anybody to read. And and I would suggest anybody out there that that wants to get this to uh, go ahead and 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 get an issue of it and. You, it's very informative, and and it's it's like you said, it tells a story, and stories are good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, and there's no slamming the guys in it. You know what I mean? I don't hammer any of the boys because I, I leave that brother and, alone, and because I respect that. It's just you know, it's just a celebration of Hawk and I's career and some of the issues that went on within the career that are everyday life issues that people say, hey, how'd you handle that, or what was? It? And you know, one of the biggest questions I get is what was it like when you got the Georgia Championship Wrestling the very first day? And, <laughs> and I said, well, I said, here, I said, are you kidding me? I said, man, the butterflies were going out of my stomach. I said, I walked into that locker room. I said, there was Tito Santana, Sergeant Slaughter, Paul Orndorff, Wildfire, Tommy Rich. I said, the Iron Sheik, Buzz Sawyer. And I said, how do you think I felt? I was just turned 21 years old. You know, so it, it was a re- really a kind of a cool thing, and I, I just come out and talk in my own language to it, like how I felt at the time, you know. Right, so. and uh, you guys were the greatest and will always be the greatest tag, and I've said it to you before, the greatest tag team of ever of all time. And the last thing Sergeant Slaughter said before he went off the air tonight was to tell you, Johnny Weaver can still put the sleeper <laughs> hold on you, even from the grave. <laughs> oh, boy. He was when I when I told that story at the Hall of Fame, he was laughing his butt off. I said, "Yeah, I said if you guys don't, you young guys out there don't think I didn't get a lesson in the wrestling business, let me tell you about the Johnny Weaver story, Fayetteville, North Carolina. Thinking I'm 280 pounds of brick solid, benching the person 500 pounds, thinking that my you know what don't stink, and they throw me in a match with Johnny Weaver. I said I'm slamming him from pillar to post until. All of a sudden, I put him in a rear chin lock, and these two fingers shoot up in the air and start flicking back and forth. I said, what in the heck is that? And then I hear the crowd start stomping their feet, and the standing ovation comes. Next thing you know, <clears throat> Johnny's making his comeback, and I miss a big clothesline or something, and he throws that sleeper on me, and he put 275 pounds of sleep so fast it wasn't even funny. <laughs> I walked in that locker room, and I told Sergeant Slaughter, I said, ain't no way anybody believes he can put me to sleep like that. <laughs> Sergeant Carnoodle were laughing their butts off, and they said, "Kid, get used to it. This is the wrestling business." And it, and one for Sarge, I think I probably would have went nuts that night. But Sarge had a good way of, uh, you know, joking with you and keeping everything at an even keel. You know, I, I it was it was I, I had to get that in before the end of the night because I. Oh knew yeah. It was, it was a good way. I to, I, I, I I knew that was coming some way tonight, man. But hey, you know what? Growing pains in the wrestling business, man, is what I triveled up to. And I, hey, and you know what? If I had to do it all over again, I would do it gladly, you know. I would do it all over again. Gosh, I, I'm so happy you came on with us tonight. And, uh, yeah, and hey, so awesome. hey uh, th- thank you for asking me to come on, man. I have it. Anytime, you know, any of your listeners, any of your listeners out there that write in, you need me to answer any of those questions or anything, man, I'll come on again and answer whatever questions you got. I appreciate it. Thank you, and I, I, I hope to see you down the road. And, I, you know, I love you guys. All right, well, thanks a lot, Hawk. I appreciate it. And, you know, remember, in the words of Hawk, it's...